Under your wings 
Oh uh-huh. 
Oh, we magnify the Lamb of God who is worthy of praise. We exalt the name of the Holy One. Hallelujah. We give praise and glory to our King. Hallelujah. 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 Praise His name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, you, we exalt you. We praise you. We glorify thy holy name. For worthy is our God. And worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Hallelujah. To take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou hast redeemed us to our God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And hast made us unto our God a kingdom of priests. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We praise and magnify our God. Hallelujah. That even while we were dead in our trespasses and sins, he quickened us together and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Father. For the great and mighty Paraclete, the one sent from the Father to the church to lead, to guide, to give unction, to give direction in the realm of the Spirit. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Oh, Spirit of God, we thank you. Yield to your direction and guidance in everything we do in this service, in our daily walk, in our thought life. We yield to the anointing. We yield to the comforter, the helper, the strengthener, the advocate, the standby, the intercessor, the teacher. We yield our all and all unto you as you lead us and guide us. As we walk in the purposes of God, fulfilling the desires and plans of the Most High. Teach us your ways, O Lord, in ways that we've not yet learned. Remind us, O Lord, of the things that we have let slip. Woo us and draw us by your Spirit into the flow of the purposes of God in the earth. And may we be as young men and young women. May we be as Caleb, Joshua, when they went into the land. As Caleb said, give me my mountain. With the testimony, my eye is not dim, nor my strength waned. May your re re rejuvenating spirit make us young men and women for the purposes of God. Make us young in strength and young in vision and young in uh, spiritual energy to carry forth your plan in the earth. May we run the race as a well-trained athlete, disciplined with the endurance 
built. That we finish our course with joy. We see the purpose of God manifest. And we walk in all that you called and all that you desired and all that you planned for each of us. In Jesus. Prego vos cler mandis cambanda dec pa de gus cler a cambande. Gramma della la cambra cambande e chischi le de chi me con moschi pa de beschi. As we're standing in worship this morning, the Holy Spirit just gave me a scripture. And I didn't know what it said. I mean, you know. I mean, I've heard the scripture before. I just didn't know what he, the reference said when he gave it to me. And, uh. So I had to go back, and then I read some more of it. And um, he just gave me 2 Kings 5, 6, 7. It said, therefore, he said, take it under thee and put it out of his hand and took it. And then I had to read back up and find out. What, and they were uh, felling a beam, and an axe head fell into the water. And he cried out and said, the, the last master, before it was borrowed. And the man of God said, where fell it? He showed him the place, and he cut down a, sti he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. And there he forced said, take it under thee. He put out his hand and took it. And I was just, I mean, you, you get a scripture like that, and you're like, what in the world are you talking to me about? I mean, because, you know, you can go, well, you know, that's cool. It's a miracle. Uh, well, that's God wants miracles. Yeah. That wasn't what he was talking to me about. Hello? He said, he said it, it was borrowed. And, um, but it sank. It sank. It sank. And that's what he's after. And he, he, he began to speak to me. And this is all I got so far. So we may, you know, we may get more, may not get anything else. He said, but you've been like the axe head that fell in the water, you sank. But the word of the Lord is stretch forth your hand and take it because you begin to swim again. You rise to the top again. Instead of being on the bottom and rusting and sinking in the waters, it's time now that the Spirit of God's saying, rise up. For you now, you're coming to the surface again. Hallelujah. Now stretch forth your hands spiritually and take a hold of the call. Take a hold of the vision. Take a hold of the purpose. Take a hold of the calling once again, glory to God. Hallelujah. And take it forth out of the water. Hallelujah. Amen. And go back to work like never before. Glory to God. Because the anointing of God is manifest and the anointing of God is strong. And the call of God and the call gifts and callings are without repentance. Glory to God. And it is time to take up your skirt, take off and take off running, glory to God, and let the hand of the Lord come on you, glory to God, and outrun the king's chariots and horses, praise God. I am telling you, the Spirit of God is speaking. Yes. We do not disdain the place he's given us to meet. We do not disdain the place that we've had to hold and to sit in the water on the bottom. But now, God is saying it's time to rise again. It is time to rise to your place. It is time to rise to your calling. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The room's not big enough. Amen. Jeff came to me and said something, you know, and, you know, it's, it's you know, you get, you get that, um, the, um, the picture, the Lord says, lengthen your cords, drive your stakes in, enlarge the place of your habitation. Amen. Now, I know we can move over to, the, to that bigger place here. That's not, that's not what he's talking about. I mean, if you had to do that for temporary, that's, but that's not, that's not the answer. I said, that's not the answer. Now, let me tell you, get your faith out there for you to get money so you can give money. We, we keep believing for the church to get finances, but we, we're, we're missing it. I'm getting this right from God right now. We're missing it. We keep praying the church will get more money because we need more money to do more things. God's saying you believe for you to get more money so you can give the money so the church will have more money. Amen. 
God's not going to grow a fig tree out here with, a, with, with, le with money leaves on it. And if they did, when you took them off, they'd wither. They'd turn all different colors, except green. Get your faith out there. God's not going to, listen, we keep praying that God bring finances to the church, and we keep missing the key. God's not going to circumvent his plan, which is for you to get the wealth to establish his covenant in the earth. He's not bypassing his principles. He's not bypassing you on the way to us having enough money to do what he's called us to do. I'm telling you, all it takes is one of you to become a multimillionaire next week. Yeah, I see, that, but see, God's not going to skip over you and bless the church without your involvement. He doesn't work. That's not his plan. It's not his plan for a dog to walk up here with a bag of money that, that a drug dealer dropped somewhere out on the road. I mean, that's possible, but that's not, his, that's not his plan. His plan is for his people to give and to tithe and to believe and to prosper and to increase and give more. That's how God wants to do it. So get your faith out there. Yeah, to bless the church. But sir, make bless me so I can bless the church. I want to bless the church. Because he wants you to have investment. He wants you to be vested in what we're doing. Spiritually, financially, labor-wise. Hello. Amen. I mean, some of you got some relatives that are they're really, really, really old, and they might, might, might leave you $100,000. That's possible. You start, now, we're not asking God to knock people off. Okay, but as they, as they, they listen, we, we have to be believing that God's going to bring finances into our hands individually so we can sow into the work of God so the work of God can be done, but that's his plan. His plan has always been that his people prosper and his people support his work. Not he just bypasses his people and supports his work. Are you here? God could support the work without you, but that's not his plan. That's not his design. He wants you, that's right, in that blessing flow. He wants you to be part of it. He wants to bless you as, your, as his father, as your, as your father. He wants to be a blessing to you so that you, then you can in turn bless his work and his heart of the work of the kingdom of God. Hello? Well, we, we need a government grant of a million dollars so we can do something for Jesus. I, and I'm not against, you know, if we, you would get a grant to do something in the city that was, you know, whatever. There's grant money out there for all kinds of things. Whether you can get one or not, it's another story. That's not the plan of God. Could it happen? Sure. Could one person walk in here and say, I'll watch you guys on television, love what y'all are doing. Here's a million dollars to do the work of God. Absolutely. But that is not his main long-term plan. His main long-term plan is for you to prosper and you to be blessed and you to walk in the blessing of God and you to support his local work and not get the money and take off and go somewhere else the second you get the money. Amen. Hello. Hello. That's the devil, too. He'll come in and get you. Oh, now it's time for you to go to that bigger church. They need, they need you. Had it happen too many times. You know? I'm about to come into some money, Pastor. Next thing you know, they're gone somewhere else. Don't you, you don't think God had you here for a reason? And for, you know, to, to, no, we, we can't go over that church. It's bigger. Well, that's not the plan. God has you here. If you're here, you're here. Don't bolt the second you get blessed. <laughs> Amen. Are you here? Brother Bill, you've seen some of that, haven't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, over time. Yeah, don't, yeah, you come back when you're broke again. No. 
we, we, we'll love you no matter what, but that this is this is the word of the Lord. Reach in and take, pick up that which is sunk, which became burdensome, which became heavy, which became too heavy to sustain in the um, where it was. It sank. But God's gonna. God can make what the burden was float where he shouldn't float. God's going to take what shouldn't have maintained and been able to stay float so we can run again and fulfill again. We've been through some stuff. Hey, young, sit down. We've been through some stuff in the past few years. We've had some battles. We've had to face some challenges. We've had to overcome some things. We've had people that we could be going and visiting their grave right now that are sitting here with us. Aren't we glad they're sitting here with us, Belinda? Yeah. You know, we've got, we've got people who walk around with, with, with toes cut off. Hello. We've got, we, we got situations and circumstances that have come against people that, you know, in, in, in the church itself where it was designed to crush the entire church. Hello. The whole design was to crush the church. And we're still here. About the same size we were when we got out of there. We haven't really grown, but that's changing. And it's not changing just because we said people, we're changing. Because we're not going to circumvent the process of God either there. You're not going to get people showing up at church if you don't go get them. It don't work that way. No more than finances are going to come without you being the, the medium to which God's going to bring it, most of it. I'm always going to give an open door for God to do something different, but that's not his main way. He's not going to bring people in. He's not going to go get the people saved and bring them here without you being involved, without you going into the highways and the byways and compelling them to come in. Amen? Are you here? Yeah, but some folks won't come. He said, he said this then they don't get to show up. Go get them. Go get them anyway. Go tell people anyway. Go share with them. I mean, we need to get once again excited about what God's called us to do as individuals in this ministry, in this church. It's, there's, some, there's some changes coming. There's some adjustments coming. There's some, there's some directional things. Now, let me, let me say this. No matter what, when I say that, don't you freak out. We are always going to be a church that stays with the Word of God and believes and, and opens ourselves up to the demonstration and manifestation of the Spirit of God because I believe that without the Word and without the Spirit, none of us can make it. Amen. Are you here or you're going home? I don't believe anybody in this room without the, without the Word of God and without the Spirit of God can live a successful life. And I don't believe anybody that comes in, whether they're old, whether you're, they're millennial, whether they're X gen whether they're the newest next gen that's coming up after the millennials, dear God, I hope they're, be they're in a better situation than they were. They're not. And what are they called? <laughs> what, what do you say? <laughs> Socialists. They're called D Gen? Z Gen. They're not the last generation. Hello. We are primed. We're on the precipice of the greatest in gathering in the history of man. Because it's getting worse and worse and worse. But that's okay, because the, the, the darker it gets out there, the brighter the light shines. And we're on the precipice of the great, I'm telling you, the revival, Wigglesworth prophesied it, talked about the last, that last wave that came in. We're going to see billions swept into the kingdom of God. But we had to prepare and get positioned I'm probably not preaching my sermon. <laughs> Just saying. If you want to let the little guy slide on out, they can go ahead and slide out. I'm, I'm over here and I'm not leaving. All right? Go ahead, guys. March, 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 march. Okay. All right.
there has been a lull in spiritual things for about 20 years now. Somewhere around the end of the 1980s, we entered into this funky whatever in the church. We got squirrely. I mean, listen, we, we had charismatics that were squirrely, but they were just, you know, ca on, on steroids for, for the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about warring tongues and battle fatigues in the church because you're the army of the Lord and flying around with helicopters doing spiritual warfare and you know and then and then <clears throat> that wasn't that didn't last for so long and then we we just kind of got <clears throat> sort of getting la lackadaisical in the church. Then we got to where everybody wanted to talk about. I remember when I went to Estonia last time I was in Estonia. When I was there, people I had taught in the Bible school in the early 90s, you know, they were now pastoring and stuff. All they wanted to talk about was that it was okay to drink. Now, that hadn't made it to America at that time yet. Now it has. We, we don't talk about is it okay. We advertise it on our churches. They have men's fellowships that they have rum and stogie parties, craft beer parties. That's their men's fellowship. No, no getting together and getting, <coughs> and getting into the spirit. Pole dancing for the pastor's wife's birthday party. Teach, I guess teaching how to seduce their husbands. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. You're opening yourself up to devils. And, and, we, and, we, and we reason this out in our minds. And the Word of God says that the wisdom of this world is earthly, sensual, devilish. <clears throat> and then we got with that law. Then we then we got all this whole new revelation about grace. That just the millennials love. It was it was a kind of a millennial mindset. I don't have to do anything. I, I get you know, free education, free this, free everything. They want to be socialists, you know, all this kind of stuff because everything's just hunky-dory and, you know, everybody's going to give me everything. I get free health care. I get free this. I get free that. The government's going to take care of everything. Yeah, until they run out of the people whose working is money. That's what Margaret Thatcher said. Socialism works until you run out of other people's money. You're going to have free education and free health care and free everything until they run out of everybody else's money, and then there ain't going to be no money to give you all that stuff. And then you're going to have Greece out in the streets are having a revolt because they lost all their, their pension because there was no money coming into it. Hello? Government can't sustain it. And that spirit came into the church. And we began to supplant the work of the Holy Ghost with natural things. Now, what do I mean by that? Our music, see, music tells you a lot. I was talking to Nathan this morning. Um, some of y'all remember the, 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 um, the old song by the OJ's Love Train. Get on a board, join hands, get on the love train, love train. And I thought, I said, think about the era. Now, this is, this is coming out of, this is the 70s. This is coming out of the race riots. This is coming out of the Martin Luther King era. This is coming out of the Deep South uh, being de desegregated and all that stuff. And what was the music saying? We need love. We, if we're going to be united, if we're going to make it, we've got to have love. We've got to join together. Now what's the music saying? The cops are the bad guy. The white guy is the bad guy. You know, kill people, kill the bee, kill the hoe, do this, all that stuff. The whole message is, being, is changed to that of hate and division. Think about it. Go back and listen to the music. I mean, and of course, we have the, uh, the famous hippie song. What the world needs now is love sweet now listen we kind of, i kind of make fun of it because it's so hippie and i was i was younger into the hippie era but i was a hip i was in the hippie era my hair was halfway down my back when I, when it was wet but it was so bushy it, it, it pulled up but i mean it still touched my shoulders it was still i mean all the way down to my shoulders when i got in the shower it went down halfway down between my shoulder blades I know y'all going, really? <laughs> now, now think about this. I went to school one day like that. The next day, baseball started, and I came back. It was over my ears. Because <laughs> Claude Kennedy didn't believe in long hair on his baseball team. Not like that. He wasn't putting up with the hippie stuff. 
I wanted ball more than I wanted hair. <laughs> yeah, love my baseball. So I mean, I, I was, I'm from the hippie era, you know, the tail end of it, but I'm from the hippie era. And, you know, so I make fun of that song, but the honesty is, think about what they were saying. We need love. We need the harmony. We need unity. Now it's all about division. It's all about destruction. It's all about getting whitey or getting the, getting the man. Man, if you're a white man right now, you are, you've got a big target on you. Honestly. In, in society, you can't say anything. You can't have an opinion about anything. You can't do anything. Okay? And that's, I'm just being real honest with you. Now, I do, and I do, and I will. Okay? And I'm not being shut up by people who tell me I can't have a voice. No more than you should shut up because people tell you you can't have a voice. Amen? I'm now referred to as a, a racist, misogynic um, Caucasian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Patriar that's right, patriarchal, uh, white, uh, embedded, ingrained, misogynic, all this kind of stuff. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm a despicable, deplorable, Bible-toting, gun, I mean, gun-toting, Bible-carrying Christian who has to change his views now that the world's changed. The message out there in the world is destruction. Well, because the spirit of the world's behind it. We're not going to make it as white people or black people or Asian people or as Latino people. We're going to make it as believers who walk together in the things of God. And we have a job to do. We have a mission to do. We have a calling to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So there's going to be some adjustments made because we we got to get off our duff, church. That was a nice way of saying you're back in. And get busy about our calling. We got to get busy about our purpose. We've got to go win the lost. We got to bring them in. We got to disciple them. We got to train them. We got to send them back out into the world and win more people for Jesus. Our church has to be alive with the Word of God and the Holy Ghost and, and a, a mission mindset to reach our Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and in the uttermost parts of the earth. We once again have to run with the heartbeat of the God. I am telling you, there was a time that this church gave um, about a fifth of what we have coming in right now away every month to missions. And so much money walked out the door. You know, we, we had to keep the doors. We had to keep things going. We used to give tons of money away every month. I used to go on mission trips and preach around the world. Oh, you were just vacation. No, I was carrying the gospel. I still get word from people out of Estonia. They want to know how Pastor Ed's doing. And I haven't been in 20 years. They still know and still remember the impact I had in their nation, those trips that I went there. And they send word. Said, tell Pastor Ed, hi. We love him. And it breaks my heart that I'm not there again. I, I want to go back. It costs money to go. Yeah, but you know what? We got to go. I've been given open, I've got opportunities to go to Guatemala, the living water. We got opportunities to go to the Rainbow Bible training centers around the world and preach. Pastor gave us that open invitation to go, to share the truth. But that's not Ed Taylor's ministry. That's the, for the church. That's us. But we got to reach, also reach our Jerusalem. We got to reach the people that we work with, the people, our neighbors. We got to reach our neighborhoods with Jesus. We got to get so fired up about what we got and stop uh, fussing about the fact we're wet and rusty. You can get the rust off. You ever heard of Navy jail? Navy jail. No. Navy jail is a rust remover. Okay, never tell. Yeah, and you, you put it on rusty stuff, and it will just eat the rust off. They use it. Obviously, they use it in the Navy on ships. Wait, wait. What? That's true. <laughs> Ca cats going. Rusty. 
ex Navy over here. <laughs> oh, it brought bad memories back. <laughs> That's what it was. It was bringing back bad memories of wipe off, wipe off, wipe off, wipe off. <laughs> Pastor, I was talking about all cap thing is wipe on, wipe off, wipe on, wipe off. <laughs> sign up, sign up. The spiritual energy was we're down here on the bottom of the, of the, of the riverbed, rusting. The energy level. And I know some, you, there, there are people here who've been coming, you've been faithful, you come help us set up, you show up, you do, you give, and yet. The life energy that we need to go forward has been dampened. But the cry of the Father, the voice of the Spirit, Benny said something to me this morning that was very, you know, you know, we were talking, he said, the voice of truth never changes. The voice of the Spirit never changes. The purposes of God never change. So as your pastor, I'm saying, let's line up. Hello. Let's get out of the funk. The navel jelly we have is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And it's going to run, it's going to pop, it's going to melt off the rust. And then iron sharpens iron. And with our, with our zeal and our fire for God and for the things of God, we're going to polish each other up. Hello. With the fire to go and to do the work of God. And the wet wood will dry out. And the fire of the Spirit will burn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen, I am telling you, I'm speaking by the Holy Ghost. I'm not speaking out of Ed Taylor. I won't think, I'm going to tell you, honestly, this morning I got out of bed and I'm thinking, oh my Jesus, I feel 90. There's just some days you get up, you feel 90. Aren't you glad you don't go by how you feel? You know? I mean, the, the, the job I took, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm walking 35 to 45 miles a week at work. I, I mean, I had somebody tell me I walk more than anybody they've ever seen. Because, I mean, at school, at work. Because, because the nature of my job is not, I'm, a, I'm not in the classroom with the student, you know, the students coming to me. I have students all over the school. I've got to go check on all day long. I'm, I'm all over the place. Then I've got to do all kinds of other stuff that they, they need for me to take, help take care of. They're all over the school. And I've got to walk in. Stuff goes on. I'm running. I'm, I'm out running. I was with Jane the other day, and I had to run out the door because something was going on. You know, we we lunch together in my office. And I had to run out and go help take care of something, you know, all the time. But that's not my calling. Now, God's using me. I'm doing things where I am. Hello. I'm, you know, kids, most of the kids know I'm a pastor now. So, uh, have, you know, and, and I have one that last year he came to me and said, will you pray for me before I take this test? And I looked at the teacher like, can I do that? And uh, she said, well, he asked you. And I said, well, I'll pray for you. He said, no. He, he leaned over and he said, put your hands on my head and pray for me. <laughs> You know, because, because you, know, you understand that the, the way the government is, you could lose your job just, just you know, whatever. If it's, if it's not whatever, or you get reprimanded, if it's not student-initiated and student-whatever. But he was asking me. I, I wasn't offering. I wasn't trying to indoctrinate him. He said, pray for me. I, I'll pray for you. I'm going to go to my office. I'm going to pray for you. No, you get your hands on my head. I'm like, All right. That's, that's, a, that's an open door of ministry. I'm doing things there. I'm able to do things without preaching Jesus. I'm still light. The, the, the advisor, the staff advisor for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and Students. So I've been asked by the students to do a Bible, small Bible study or Bible teaching during their meeting. So they have to, it has to be student initiated. I can't I can't initiate it. You know. So praise the Lord. So there's a good thing. But our calling, my primary calling is to the church, to pastor this church, 
to see us fulfill God's purpose, to see you fulfill your purpose in the kingdom of God. You have a purpose. And whatever it is that's become your go-to right now, because you really know you're not in the fullness of your purpose, that's okay. But don't forget, get back up off the riverbed and float and pick up the calling. You might still be working a job doing something different or whatever, but that's not, don't let that, don't let that become who you are or what you're called to. And we got ministers in this church. And we got people who went to Rama. We got one, two, three, four sitting in here right now that Rama graduates. Okay? We got people who've been in the ministry longer than I have, but been saved. I used to listen. When I first got saved, I listened to Brother Bill on the radio because he was on, on w, uh, WBZQ, Greenville, North Carolina, between Copeland and Hagen. Brother Bill was right in the middle of them. He had one come on, Bill, and then the other come on. He just sandwiched himself right in there. He was the, he was the villain that kept the Oreo together. I'll never forget the first time I, he, he was in the church and I got to meet him. I said, you're the Bill Bader's on the radio? Yeah. I listen to you. <laughs> yeah. We got callings here. We have gifts here. We have ministries here. We got psalmists. We got different, we got different all kinds of things. That because, because, you know, we lost numbers and we lost the building and, you know, because the, the, the guy wouldn't really sign our, our lease. And, and, and really, at the price he wanted to, we couldn't sign it. We just, we didn't have that kind of, we just didn't have the money anymore to do what he wanted. And we didn't need to be there anyway. We needed to move. That was a kick in the seat of the pants. Because, I'll be honest with you, it was so nice of it, I hated to leave. We had it set up so nice. It was It was comfortable. And we had everything set up. We had, it, was a, it, it just needed to be in a different place. It needed to be our place. And we needed to be in a different location. God wanted us somewhere else. That part of town died. It did. I mean, it got cut off by the interstates. The shopping centers died off. The traffic died off. People weren't coming over there. Uh, they could, we, we'd have people drive around for 45 minutes looking for us and couldn't find us. Yeah. All the time. And they, some days they stumble in and go, man, I've been looking for you for an hour. What? You know. We weren't supposed to, we, we needed this time. But all of the things that happen, here we are today. Here we are today. Do we take the word of the Lord and stretch forth our hand and lay hold of the calling that now God's raising up out the, the riverbed, out the floor of the river, out the floor of the water, and take it out and once again begin to put to use our callings, our purpose, our destiny as individuals and a body. I think the new word now is collective. Okay. We have all, you know, all kinds of new phrases. I mean, you know, I'm no longer the senior pastor. I'm the lead pastor. I don't care. This, senior pastor is not a biblical term. It isn't. Assistant pastor is not a biblical term. Lead pastor is not a biblical term. But, you know, so if, if, if that's what everybody's calling the guys, the bigger, the, the big dog, okay, I'm the lead pastor. You know? I mean, we, we got, you know, we got the parking lot pastor, the bathroom pastor, the... <laughs> I've been them all. Trust me. I've done it all. I've cleaned the toilets, you know. I've cleaned up the baby puke. I've done it all in the church. Walk the, walk the pastor's wife to the car while I was getting wet, holding them up, umbrella over top of them. You know, done, I've done it all. Didn't begrudge doing it. I was taking care, was taking care of those who, who needed to be able to minister. Okay? So, um, you do what you, you just, we do what we need to do. So I call you. You're being summoned by the Spirit of God. <clears throat> I'm going to use my own personal illustration. 
It's time to turn Magnum P.I. off. Oh. Remember I, I took my old story? I, I, got, I got tired. I needed rest. I started staying home on Wednesday nights because I didn't have time anywhere else in the week to get rest. On Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday, I couldn't because you got it's so easy to get used to not doing. I've been trying to convince myself to go back in the weight room. And it fleets by. Yeah, I'm going to get it. Well, <laughs> I'm going next week. Going to join and get him back in that weight room. I'll do it Tuesday. I'll do it Wednesday. Uh, a couple weeks. Got a lot going on right now. I need to. I, mean, I really do. But it's hard sometimes to want to get back into doing what you used to do. Remember when you first got saved? You were at church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, no matter what, nothing came out of your way, nothing got in your way. You would not let anything stop you from being there. Hello? You dragged them little crumb snatchers in there, hanging on your hips, on your back, in a cart. You got them in the door. Hello? Are y'all you, are here? You've gone home. You put them in the middle of the aisle and cover them up with a blanket, give them a bunch of toys, they'd be back there playing. You were in church. Because you had to have what you got. See, we put high value on it. And then life happens. And you begin to readjust your priorities and what you value. Then he told me this morning, he's the richest man in the world, he thinks. Not because of finances, but because of the value he has in the things of God and the things of God. He's put the weight and value on them, and they're priceless. So I say, how do we value the things of God? His calling, your purpose and destiny in life. Did I think we, I would be working a job at 60, you know, and, you know, and, and offsetting the finances of you know, what we don't have coming into church? No. But Paul made tents. I'm making tents. Honestly, because the, because the calling is more important than, you know, being in full-time ministry. Yeah, well, if you're in full-time ministry, you're getting no money. Are you really in full-time ministry? Or the image or the status of not working a secular job. I'm doing what I got to do to be positioned to do what God called me to do. And I believe it will, it'll, it'll, it will not be a, a forever thing. I, you know, um, I believe it's going to, that's going to come to an end. I won't have to do it. Okay? I mean, if I work five years for the county, I get from the county I get about $250, $300 a month in retirement. I'll get vested in retirement, a, a minimum retirement. I'll get $250 a month out of them, which will be fine. Now, I have, I have gotten vested in the Social Security system now. You know, for years I was under the church. I wasn't, get, I wasn't in the Social Security system. My job before and going back to work, I'm vested in the Social Security system. So I've got, you know, money be coming from them at, at 68.6 years old. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not counting on that. And church take off and explode. We can go back to being full time, and God's going to take care of us for the next rest of our life. But that's not why I'm, I'm not looking for us to grow so we can, we can have a retirement. I'm saying we can go back and be full-time ministry. We don't, we don't have to do the others. We can do what God called us to do all the time. We can, we can go at will and travel at will and go to the nations at will and do what God has for us to do as a church. There are mission trips we as a church need to take. Take teams. There's so much to do. And honestly, we're getting to a point there's going to be a short time to do it in. Amen? Well, I have shared from the Holy Ghost what he wanted to say, and so we're going to receive an offering and go home. Is everybody all right with that? Okay. Those of you watching by, by uh, Facebook Live, we're glad you were here. Um, Obviously, you watch us on, on, on a somewhat regular basis because you like what we're doing. And so I would, I would um, offer to you um, the um, opportunity to be a part of what we do by giving here. Amen. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, you don't have to tithe here, but you can give here and be a part of what we're doing and uh, help us do the work of God uh, around the world. Praise God. That, that information will be going up on your screen. Oh, it's already up. It just hasn't showed up on mine yet. All right. Hallelujah. But they're going to be putting up the, the graphic with the information up there. Hallelujah. And we're excited about that. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. If you're giving the traditional way with cash or check and need an offering envelope, raise your hand. If you're giving electronically, go ahead and send that. Glory to God. Amen. Anybody need an offering envelope? All right. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people as they tithe, as they give, as they bring their offering into the storehouse of God. Thank you that they're blessed, that have windows of heaven open unto them, and you pour out them blessings that don't have room enough to receive, and that as you bring finances through their hands and they give into the kingdom, we thank you, Father God, that the flow is enlarged. The pipeline is enlarged so that more money can flow through their hands into the kingdom of God to see the work of God done throughout all the earth. We thank you for it in the majestic, mighty, and marvelous, wonderful name of Jesus. Everyone agree with that by saying amen. Amen. Go ahead, ushers, receive into the kingdom of God. Those that are watching, thank you. If you um, haven't been able to figure out how to sign up yet, uh, there is a couple of ways to do it. We have, um, <clears throat> we have um, Square Cash. PayPal, both of those are methods that, that show up on our screen. Um, you can give that way. Uh, if you have any issues with that, uh, email us at office at fvc.org. We can get you the information on how to be, how to be electronically uh, connected to our ministry. Glory to God. Uh, otherwise, we call you blessed and favored of God. Can you say amen? We love you. We speak life over you and your, your finances. We command you to be a blessing. We command you to rise and walk in your calling in Jesus' name. And then there's more to come. There's more to come. There's, 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 more, there's more stuff coming on the horizons for us as a, as a church. We love you. God bless you. Until we meet again, remember that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We love you. We'll see you next time in Jesus' name. Amen.